If you're a dad, you're not afraid to work hard. Never give up. Never compromise. And the best dads always look for ways to get better. I'm looking for something to energize me. I'm looking for something to push me further. And I'm looking for something to go with these nachos. Dad Fuel. The energy drink designed just for dad. So I can finish the fight. So I can finish the race. So I can finish mowing the lawn. And later on, I might watch some golf. The fuel dads need to do the things dads do. Climb the highest peak. Go the furthest distance. Check the scores. Read the newspaper. Give amazing relationship advice. Why are you crying? You should really talk to your mother about that. Dad Fuel comes loaded with taurine, ginseng, and 100% of your daily recommended value of Hi Hungry, I'm Dad. I start every morning with the four Ds. Devos, donuts, Dad Fuel, down blanket. Breakfast of champions, baby. Now available in four bowl flavors. Original orange, grow model raspberry, grow master mango, and I thought I told you to take out the garbage grape. You can't touch my passion. You can't touch my drive. And you definitely can't touch my thermostat. No way. So whether you're thirsty for victory or just plain thirsty. No, seriously, it's empty. Can I get another one? Dad Fuel. Because I am fearless. Because I am unstoppable. Because the players on TV aren't going to yell at themselves. Come on! Throw the ball! Happy Father's Day. Let's stand. Let's sing today. So great to see you. I've been away for a while. Great to be back with my church family. I want you to lift your voices in praise. It's great to praise the Lord. That's a wonderful thing, right? And to give thanks to Him. So let's ascribe the worth that is due His name. And let's thank Him today from a heart of love. Sing with me. I come before you today. And there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me. For all the blessings that I cannot see. With a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just 
thankful today for all the blessings of God in your life. What a blessing just to be here today in this place. Sing it with me now. For all you've done in my life, you took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You took my my sin and my shame. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. people. Amen. Are you thankful today for the blessings of God in your life? So many things we take for granted. Food, clothing, shelter, our family, this property, this building, our church family. Today, let's thank the Lord. Give him praise. Sing from your heart to him. It honors him. Why would we not? Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today we're thankful for fathers, right? But we're mostly thankful for our heavenly Father who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Thank you. song of praise. Come on now. With an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. praise today. Give him praise. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. You say, Pastor, why do you say that all the time? Because it's in the Bible. Did you know that? Look it up. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. So great to see you again. I'm trying to get my feet back under me and trying to get back into my routine, which is a little difficult. I'm very much a creature of habit, so it'll take me a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but I'll get back into the 
the routine. Man cannot live by vacation alone, right? Yeah. I want to thank you for how you responded to Jimmy, my dear friend. I've known him for so long. I played the piano for a quartet uh, that he sang in in my Bible college days, and Jimmy and I have been friends. And he was a pastor for years. He now he worked with Franklin Graham. Now he is working with uh, Franklin's son, Will, and uh, he's an evangelist. And he also does interim work, uh, such as the last several weeks, filling in for me while I was away. And I appreciate the way that you responded to him. I really mean that. You responded to him so well. And the love offering was phenomenal. You want me to tell you what the love offering was? All I'm going to say is that from this point on, Ed Thomas is taking the love offering. Thank you, Brother Ed. I don't know what he said. Brother Ed, could you come take my love offering right now? I, I don't know what he said, but uh, the love offering from our church family was $3,098. But wait, there's more. A visitor gave Jimmy $1,000. But wait, there's more. He told me he sold five or $600 in CDs. Pastor, that's way too much for us to have given him. Oh, no. I was ecstatic. See, you don't know Jimmy like I know him. He is not a rich preacher. He's raised eight children. I saw yesterday the average it takes to raise one child is $233,000 from, from the time they're born until the time they go to college, I think is what the study revealed. I've known Jimmy when he had absolutely nothing, when he had to pray it down just to pay his bills. I'm serious. So when I received word that you've given him that, that blessed my heart. And it blessed his heart as well. So thank you for responding so well. Today, as you know, is Father's Day, and we're going to be doing things in the service to honor fathers. I'll say more about that as we go along. I will say I received a text from Linda, Linda and Irma. They joined our church recently. And Irma, she's either 90 or she's over 90. Do you remember? Okay, she's in her 90s, let's put it that way. You stop counting when you get into your 90s, right? Um, but they were on their way to church, and, and um, Irma started having some difficulty with dizziness and so forth, and so Linda took her back home and wanted us to pray about the situation, so I will do that. And so thankful you're here today, trusting God for a great day. Good to see Barb Edley as well back with this longtime member of Bible Baptist, but uh, she moved down to Florida. Bless her heart. Yeah, she moved to Florida. Someone has to do it, though, right? Someone has to take Jesus down there. Have a good governor, by the way, down there. Very good governor, yeah. Yeah. Thought I might say that. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time here at Bible Baptist. It's so great to see my church family. And, and yes, it's somewhat uh, of a challenge to get back into the routine, but it's just been refreshing. It's lifted my spirits to be here today and to see the people that I love, the people that I shepherd here at Bible Baptist. And I pray that you might bless in our service. We pray that you might be honored in every sense of the word. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I like to go to the beach with Daddy. He likes to throw me up in the air. He's good at hugs and kisses. It was really fun going fishing with you, Dad. He sends videos that are funny. He kisses us before he goes to work. I love that not this one, not this one, but this one. <laughs> Where does your dad work? Um, in his office. I think he's a good football player. My favorite number is Daddy's number nine. Daddy's catch the football. I wish I caught the football. My favorite football team is New York, New York, Carolina. Oh, for three. My three-year-old turned against me, too. I thought he was loyal. In 20 years, I think I could beat my dad in football. Or maybe when I'm 18 or 16. I'm not gonna let that happen. I love Daddy because he's funny. He tells jokes. 
I'd rather go hang out with my dad than chill with anybody else. He's like my best friend. The way he takes care of us, his family, how he gives back to his community. When you look at him, you know he's a really good guy, that he has a really good heart. And I think that's why I love him most. For her to say that, that's like, that, 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 that means a lot to me. You know, it means that I'm doing something right, you know, as a parent. I love my dad because he's so nice to me. I love daddy because he loves me. Like I love him more than one time, like I can't pick a number that I love him. Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> What's up, boy? Love you, boy? Love you too. Man. It's moments where you really find out the things that your kids appreciate about you and the, maybe the things that you do with them and the things that are most important to them. I think being a father helps you prioritize what's important. And your kids have a funny way of making sure you know what the important things are. Family is most important. You know, football come and go. Uh, family will last forever. I will never forget this Father's Day, believe me. I will never forget this one. Pops, I love you. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Daddy, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. Thanks for being my daddy. Well, today, as we've stated, and as you know, is Father's Day, and uh, I'm uh, somewhat old-fashioned in some ways, although I have no problem with doing things in a modern way in church concerning music and media. We use a lot of media all the time. Uh, I believe in being up-to-date concerning those things, but uh, I still have an old-fashioned tinge in me, and I don't think that's all bad. You know, on Mother's Day, when the service was over, a man shook my hand back there where Bud is standing, and he said, you know, I go to a church where they do not recognize mothers on Mother's Day, but I told myself, Pastor Mark will. He said, I just knew. So he came here that day for Mother's Day, and this is something that um, amazingly in churches is not being emphasized like it once was emphasized. When I was growing up, it was just something that was done every year and throughout my ministry. But the last 10 years or so, there's been a drop off concerning emphasizing mothers on Mother's Day and fathers on Father's Day. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I've had conversations with people and I've read things about it in reference to church. But part of it, part of it, not all of it, but part of it, I'm, I'm, confident of this when I say it. Part of it is we're, we're in the everyone deserves a trophy stage in our nation, right? And I certainly want to be sensitive. There are those who say on Mother's Day, there are some ladies who are not able to have children. The same thing is true with, with men. There are some men who are not able to have children, and we need to be sensitive of them, and it's somewhat hurtful on Mother's and Father's Day if we if we emphasize motherhood and fatherhood because they are not able. Once again, I want to be sensitive. My wife and I thought we were going to be in that category. I don't know if I've ever told you that, but my wife and I thought that we were not going to be able to have children uh, for several years. So I want to be sensitive of that. But even if a person is in that situation, a husband, a wife, and they're not able to have children, every, every one of us in here, every single one of us, has a mother, right? Now, my mother's deceased, but I certainly had a mother. So we all had a mother. The same thing is true in reference to a father. My father's deceased. He passed away in 1989. Hard for me to fathom. It's been that long. But we all have mothers. We all have fathers. And so I have no issue at all with us saying, okay, we're going to honor mothers on one day. We're going to honor fathers. And then Churches can over-spiritualize this. I was reading an article a while back, and uh, the pastor was advocating that we no longer emphasize mothers on Mother's Day and fatherhood on Father's Day because church is not about honoring people. It's about honoring God. I believe that. I believe church is about honoring God. But as I was reading the article, 
I could not help but think that God elevates fatherhood in his word. And God elevates motherhood in his word. So are we not honoring God when we are elevating what he has elevated in his word? We most certainly are. Sometimes we as Christians can be so heavenly minded we're no earthly good. <laughs> I'm convinced of that. So part of my old-fashioned nature is such that I'm pretty sure that I'm going to continue doing this until I'm no longer pastoring or I depart from this earth. We want the fathers today to feel valued and, and we know what, what happens on the sitcoms. We know what happens on the television shows in reference to men in general and especially fathers. Fathers are uh, portrayed as buffoons. I want you to understand, men, you are of great value to God. All men in this room, and specific, specifically today talking about fathers, you are of great value. And I want you to feel valued today. I told one of our men today, I hope you're... Your child uh, treats you well today. I, I told the child before the service, uh, treat your father well today. And I meant that, okay? It's important. It's important that we honor our mothers and our fathers. After all, that is a command, right? Honor thy father and thy mother. So we're going to do that uh, in the service today. And I would like for the oldest child present the oldest child present, if your father is in the room, the oldest child present, if your father's in the room, just go back where that distinguished, I'm sorry, that gentleman, I'm sorry, that man back there, no, go back there where Mr. Bud is standing. I love to have fun with Bud because I can joke with him. If I joke with you, that means I like you, right? So I like him a lot. So anyway, the oldest child present, if your father is here, just go back and, and Mr. Bud will have you line up over here. And then in just a moment, a song will begin to play, um, and you will deliver something to your father today. And believe me, it's a little better than some of the things we've had in the past. You know, the little flashlights and, you know, anyway, it's a little bit better. So hold on just a moment. I would like for all fathers to stand, all fathers to stand, whether your child is present or not. Please stand, all fathers, okay? Now, I recognize that some of the fathers in this room, your children, are not present for whatever reason. I'm in that category myself, okay? So here's what's going to happen in just a moment. When the song begins, and by the way, it's, it's a lengthy song, but we're going to let the song play all the way through. Just listen to the song. Let the song minister to you as well, okay? Uh, but when the song begins, the children, Bryce doesn't like me calling him a child, the young the young man over there, Bryce, okay, he will begin, and uh, you'll take the gift to your father, and let your father know how much you appreciate him, and not because I'm asking you to, and, and please do not do it in a mechanical fashion, mean it from your heart, okay, be thankful for your father, and then fathers, if your children are not present, oh, I missed something, once you receive the gift, men, you can be seated, once you receive the gift, you can go ahead and sit down, okay, the ones who are still standing, that means your children are not present, and uh, Mr. Bud will make sure that those individuals are served, okay? We got it. My wife's got on her cool sunglasses over there today. All right. Okay. All right. So we understand you stay standing until you receive the gift from your father. Here we go. From your child.
was awesome to be a father. And I uh, wish my father were still alive. I had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful father that I've talked about here many times. Not really going to do that much today. But uh, there will come a day when your father is no longer here. You're no longer able to interact with him. So make it count. Don't just let him know today. Let him know consistently that you appreciate his influence in your life. And obviously, our Heavenly Father is the example, men, that we need to be reflecting in the home. I'd like for all the fathers to stand once again. And I'd like to have a prayer of dedication for all of these men. And then we'll have some, uh, uh, some music in just a moment. Father, I thank you for this Father's Day and what a blessing it is once again to be back here at Bible Baptist Church. And my mind goes back to when I was a little child and my father and the influence he was upon my life. And Lord, I know he's with you. And I know that one day I will see him on the other side. I look forward. I look forward to that time. Lord, help us as men to understand that we are not simply called upon to be fathers. We're not simply called upon to be good fathers. We are called upon to be godly fathers, and there's definitely a difference. We can be a father, but not a good father. And we can be what many would deem a good father, but not be a godly father. Lord, I thank you that I had a godly father, and help me Help me to be a godly father as well. Help me. I pray that this service might bring honor and glory to you. Abba Father, our Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you for your many blessings, for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for so many things that we take for granted. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Men, you may be seated. Good morning. Um, we have a song for you this morning entitled Gather at the River. It is based on the high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed as recorded in John chapter 17. The message of this song is for the body of Christ, um, encouraging unity among believers. So Jackie will read a few verses from John 17. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I am them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity, then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. John 17, 20 and 23. Jesus 
Thank you, ladies. Let's all stand and sing a cappella. His name is wonderful. Sing it with me. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Jesus, my Lord. You may be seated. What's your dad's name? Matt. How old is your dad? 23. Okay. What is your dad's favorite food? Okay. What is your dad's favorite thing to do? I'll be healthy. Okay. And what is your dad's superpower? Strong. He's strong. All right. And why do you think your dad loves you so much? Um, I don't know. Okay. What's your favorite thing about your dad? He's funny. He's funny. All right, look at the camera and tell dad how much you love him. What? Look at the camera and tell your dad how much you love him. <laughs> what? Just tell your dad you love him. All right. What is your daddy's name? I don't know. Okay. How old is your dad? I don't know. How old do you think he might be? I know how old my mom is. Okay, how old is your mom? 15. Okay. And what is your dad's favorite food? Any. Any food, okay. What's your daddy's favorite thing to do? What's daddy like to do? Um, he likes to sleep. He likes to sleep, okay. What is your daddy's superpower? Helping, that's a good superpower. What, why do you think your daddy loves you so much? Um, because I helped him on Sunday. You helped him on Sunday, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. And what is your favorite thing about your daddy? Okay, and can you look at the camera and tell daddy how much you love him? A lot. All right. What is your dad's name? Christopher. How old is your dad? 23. And what is your dad's favorite food? Not sure. What's your dad's favorite thing to do? I don't know. What's your dad's superpower? Being my dad. What does your dad, I'm sorry, why does your dad love you so much? I'm his daughter. And what is your favorite thing about your dad? He's nice. Okay, tell your dad how much you love him. A lot. What is your daddy's name? Daddy. Daddy, that's a good name. How old is your daddy? Five, okay. And what is daddy's favorite food? Uh. You don't know? That's okay. What is daddy's superpower? 
And a superpower. He doesn't have a superpower? No. Okay. And why do you think your daddy loves you so much? Because he likes me to give his phone to him. He likes you to give, give you his phone? Yeah. Okay. And what is your favorite thing about your daddy? Um, playing with him. Playing with him? All right. Can you look at the camera and tell daddy that you love him very much? Mm -hmm. Say, I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. What is your daddy's name? Mm -hmm. um, What's daddy's name? Um, is it Daddy? Yeah. Okay. And how old is your daddy? My daddy's old. Um, What do you think? How old do you think Daddy is? How old? If you don't know, that's okay. Uh, what is Daddy's favorite food? Water. What does Daddy like to eat? Pizza. Uh huh. Pizza. Pizza? Mm, yeah. Okay. What is Daddy's favorite thing to do? He do is going. See if he go on the train. Goes on what? See. Okay. Why do you think Daddy loves you so much? Do you know why Daddy loves you so much? No? Okay. Can you look at the camera and say, I love you, Daddy? What? Say, I love you, Daddy. Love you, Daddy. What is your Daddy's name? Uh, Jack. And how old is your Daddy? I don't know. What do you guess? He's, um, like, um, taller than me, and I don't know how, um, how old is he? Okay. What is Dad's favorite food? Um, he likes um um veggies. When my my mom cooks um something yummy, he really likes it. Okay. And what is your daddy's favorite thing to do? Uh, just play basketball. Okay. And what is your daddy's superpower? Uh, just. Just happy. Being happy. All right. And what is your favorite thing about your daddy? Um, I was I like to always play with my daddy. All right. And can you look at the camera and tell daddy how much you love him? Mhm. Mm is your daddy's name? Um, Papa. Okay. And how old is your daddy? Uh, I'm ten. Okay. What is Daddy's favorite food? His favorite food is chips. Chips, okay. And what is Daddy's favorite thing to do? Um, is to play Michael Jordan. Play Michael Jordan, okay. And what is Daddy's superpower? Um, he don't have a superpower. He doesn't have a superpower, okay. Um, why do you think your daddy loves you so much? Because, um, we have a lot of men just in Because why? Um, we have a both name. You both have the same name? Yeah. Okay. And what is your favorite thing about your daddy? Um, is to, is to, um, is to, um, play with Basketball. He's good at playing basketball? Yeah. Okay. And can you tell Daddy how much you love him? Yeah. Can you look at the camera and say, I love you, Daddy? I love you, Daddy. What is your Daddy's name? Tyson. How old is your Daddy? I don't know. What's a guess? How old do you think he is? Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> What is your daddy's favorite food? Um, vegetables. 
vegetables. What is your daddy's favorite thing to do? Play with me. Play with you. What is daddy's superpower? He picks on sickness things for me. He does what? He he takes on sickness things away for me. Okay. What is your favorite thing about your daddy? I like to play with him. Why does your daddy love you so much? Because of Jesus. Because Jesus made me. That's right. And tell daddy how much you love him. How much do you love me, daddy? You tell daddy how much you love him. How much do you love me, daddy? <laughs> What's your daddy's name? Daddy. How old is your dad? I don't know. What's a guess? How old do you think he might be? You don't know? That's okay. What is his favorite food? What's your daddy like to eat? I don't know. You don't know? That's okay. What do you think daddy's favorite thing to do is? TV. Okay. And what is your daddy's superpower? Don't you don't know. Okay. Why do you think your daddy loves you so much? And what is your favorite thing about your daddy? That, um, he likes to snuggle me. Oh, that's fun. And can you look at the camera and tell daddy how much you love him? I love him so much, daddy. What is your dad's name? Mac. Okay. How old is your dad? 51. And what is your dad's favorite food? Okay. Um, what's your dad's favorite thing to do? Play with me. All right. What is your dad's superpower? Strength. All right. And why do you think your dad loves you so much? Because... Um, you don't know. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite thing about your dad? It's that he usually agrees with mostly everything I say. Okay. And can you look at the camera and tell Dad how much you love him? I love Dad so much I can go all through the solar system and show him all the planets. All right. What is your daddy's name? Um, Brian. And how old is your daddy? Um, 40. Okay. What is your daddy's favorite food? Um. Um, tacos. And what is your daddy's favorite thing to do? Um, um, grill. Ooh, fun. What is daddy's superpower? Um, um I, I, he's a rocket ship. Okay. And why do you think your daddy loves you so much? Mm, because I'm a girl. Okay. And what is your favorite thing about your daddy? Mm, a rocket ship. Okay. And can you look at the camera and tell daddy how much you love him? Mm. Tell daddy you love him very much? Love daddy very much. What is your dad's name? James. How old is your dad? I'm seven. And what is your dad's favorite food? Steak. Okay. Steak. What is your dad's favorite thing to do? Play. And what is your dad's superpower? I don't think he has nothing. Don't think he has nothing. What? Why does your dad love you so much? Because he sent me. He delivered me from the hospital. Okay. 
What is what is your favorite thing about your dad? He watches NCIS. All right. Tell dad how much you love him. Yes. Wow. What is your dad's name? Gilmore. How old is your dad? I, I, I don't remember. Can you guess? What do you think? Just as a guess. Like 40 something? Okay. What is your dad's favorite food? Okay. What's your dad's favorite thing to do? Fix stuff a lot. I, I, I just don't know. Okay. What do you think dad's superpower is? <laughs> There's lots of things that I don't know about my dad. <laughs> Why does your dad love you so much, do you think? You don't know. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite thing about your dad? There's a lot, right? Pick one favorite thing. What's your favorite thing about your dad? I, I, I don't know what to pick. Okay. Can you tell dad how much you love him? Look at the camera and tell dad. Love you, dad. Love you, dad. Well, I learned some things about our children, that's for sure, right? Have some young fathers in this room. Some of you fathers love vegetables. I guarantee you, if you ask any of my children that, that would not be what they say. My dad loves vegetables. And some of you like NCIS, I heard that too. <laughs> NCIS, all right. Thank you, Malia, for putting that together. I, I'm sure that took several weeks. Well, today, I want to talk to you for a few minutes about God's search for men. I want to read a passage from Ezekiel, chapter 22 and verse 30. The Bible reads, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. God is looking for men. Today, I want to bring just a simple message. I've been out of town, rolled back into town Friday after being gone several weeks. So just a, a little information in the spirit of being transparent about your pastor. When your pastor has not had adequate uh, preparation time, he always brings notes to the pulpit. So I have notes. And in general, the message is shorter. So the moral of the story is, I know what you're thinking, Pastor, Please always take notes to the pulpit and don't study as much. Okay, I know, I know, I understand. But today I want to bring a simple message entitled God's Search for Me, and I hope this will be helpful. Sometimes God uses the um, simple messages to work in a mighty way, and I trust that will be the case today. God is looking not simply for men. God is not looking simply for those whom many would deem as good men. God is looking for godly men. So that's the question we all have to ask ourselves. And although this message pertains specifically to fathers in this room, it is something that is applicable for all men in this room. So the message is entitled, God's Search for Men. Father, I pray you'll bless in the next few minutes and help me to say that which you would want me to say, nothing more, nothing less. Holy Spirit of God, use this message to work in a mighty way in the hearts of those before me, especially the men and especially the husbands, the fathers in this room, Father. Bless in a mighty way is my prayer, for it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. <clears throat> God created man in his own image, right? Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in 
our image, the triune, tripartite, three-in-one God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, made man in his image. This is why we are three-in-one. We have a spirit. We have a soul. That's the mind, the will, the emotions. We have a body. That's the shell, the housing, the casing, if you will, for the spiritual component. So we have a spiritual component. We have a physical component. The spiritual component cannot be seen by the naked eye. Certainly God can see that component. We cannot. The physical component can be seen by the naked eye. That's what you're looking at right now. God created us in his image. God created us for fellowship. God created us to glorify him. That's why we quote the verse weekly, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. God created us to magnify him. God created us to give others a right opinion of him. God created us to represent him in this world. That's a tall order, is it not? But sin changed everything. Before Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says that God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, and man enjoyed perfect fellowship with God. But that all changed once Adam and Eve sinned. Now the fellowship was broken. Now there was a separation between holy God and sinful man. Man needed a way back to God. Man needed to be reconciled to God. And God in his love and his grace and his mercy gave his son Jesus Christ as a redeemer. Genesis 3 15, the verse, the first book of the Bible, chapter 3 verse 15, Jesus is referred to as the seed of the woman who would one day crush the serpent's head, a reference to Satan. God gave his son Jesus Christ so that man might be redeemed, so that man might be reconciled to God, so that man might be brought back into fellowship with God. And because of Jesus and his death on the cross, Jesus shedding his blood, not our good works, but Jesus dying on the cross through his death, we can be saved. Saved from what? Saved from our sin. Saved from hell. We can be born again, as Jesus told Nicodemus, ye must be born again. But after we are born again, God calls us to do his work. It is not God's will for every man to be a pastor in the sense of your pastor. It is not God's will for every man to be a missionary. It is not God's will for every man to be an evangelist. But it is God's will for every man to fellowship with him, honor him, glorify him, magnify him, and represent him on this earth. So the question we have to ask today, are we rising to the challenge, men? God's search for men. First of all, God looks for qualities in men, decisiveness. God looks for decisive men. You know, Joshua decided that he would serve God himself but he also decided that his family would serve God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The Bible is very clear. Read Ephesians chapter 5. The husband is the head of the home. The husband is to be the leader in the home. Men, that's not about power. That's about responsibility. And primarily, that's about spiritual responsibility, spiritual leadership in the home. We are called upon men to be spiritual leaders in our homes. I thank God that I had a father who took that seriously. I mentioned on Mother's Day that my father liked to watch the show The Waltons, remember? The Waltons, that old show. But something always bothered my dad about that show, even though he liked the show. What bothered him was that the father in that show was not the spiritual leader, it was the mother. And there were times when we were watching the show and my dad would actually talk to the television. Do you ever do that? I know you don't do that, right? Dad would talk to the television as if the actors could hear him. There were times more than once when John, the father, would stay home and the mother would take the children to church. My dad would look at the television and say, it's not supposed to be that way. Now, why was he doing that? Did he believe they could hear him? Obviously, he understood they could not hear him. He was saying that for my benefit. 
And I thank God that I had a father who took this responsibility seriously. He was the spiritual leader in the home. It was my father who took the family to church. And by the way, I never remember him asking my mother for permission. Hello? I never remember him asking me for permission, never remember him asking my brother for permission. We knew we better be in that car 30 minutes before the service started because we were going to church and we were going to be on time. That's just the way it was. Every time the doors were open, my father took the family to church. It was not the wife's responsibility because that's not the way it's supposed to be. Amen? My father read the Bible and prayed with the family because that's the way it's supposed to be. My father taught me to witness. My father taught me to give. He was the spiritual leader in our home. God is looking for men like Joshua who will say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God is also looking for men with desire, desire to know the person of God. It's not enough to know about God. We are told in the book of James that even the devils believe and tremble. Man must hear the message of redemption through Jesus Christ. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Man must hear that Jesus died on a cross to pay for the sins of mankind. Man must understand his sinfulness. Man must understand that he is not basically good, that he is a sinner. He was born that way. He didn't become a sinner. He was born a sinner, alienated from God, and that if he dies in that sinful state, he will be eternally alienated from God. Man must understand that his only hope is the one who shed his blood on the cross over 2,000 years ago, dying to pay for the sins of mankind. Man must call upon Christ, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Bible says, I am the way, Jesus. These came forth from his mouth, these words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so, men, we, we come into a relationship with God by trusting his son, Jesus, by trusting Christ as our Savior. So, we begin knowing God at that point by trusting his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior. But there's more to it than that. God wants us to deepen that relationship. Paul said this in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. The Bible says, Bless are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. So, men, it's not enough to be saved, to be born again. If you know Christ your Savior, that's wonderful. That's the beginning of knowing God. You cannot know God without having a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. But God wants you to deepen that relationship. God wants you to know Him in a personal, in an intimate way. Are you seeking to deepen that relationship with God by spending time with Him in His Word? In His Word, as we read His Word, God speaks to us. As we pray, we speak to Him. God is looking for men desirous to know the person of God. God is looking for men desirous to know the plan of God. Here's what we're told in Psalm 32 and verse 8. We're told that God is there to teach us, to instruct us, to guide us. God wants us to follow his will, his plan, his purpose for our lives. And my mindset should not be, well, this is my body and this is my life. I will do with my body and I will do with my life as I wish. No, no, no. My mindset should be, Lord, here am I, send me. I belong to you. This is not my body. This is your body. These are not my hands. They are your hands. These are not my feet. They are your feet. I belong to you. The Apostle Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We need men who will say, God... I will go wherever you want me to go, I'll say whatever you want me to say, and I'll do whatever you want me to do. Men who are desirous to follow God. And by the way, God's not hiding his will under a rock. God wants you to know his will. And you learn, you understand his will as you obey his revealed will. That's how you learn his geographical will and his plan for your life by following that which he has clearly revealed in his word. God is desirous that we might be men of desire, knowing the person of God, knowing the plan of God, knowing the power of God. You know, God keeps us saved. He saves us through his son, Jesus Christ, and he keeps us saved. 
And he completes our salvation, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. My salvation is not dependent upon me. Thank God for that. My salvation is dependent upon the God who saved me. He saved me. He's keeping me saved, and he will complete my salvation. But also that power within me, the same power, by the way, that brought Jesus Christ out of the grave is there to empower me now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That power is there to enable me to be the husband that I should be, to be the father that I should be, to be the church member that I should be, to be the employer that I should be, to be the employee that I should be, to be the citizen that I should be, to be the Christian that I should be, to be the man that I should be. Everything that I need to be what God wants me to be is at my disposal because I have his word and I have his spirit within me. And I need to tap into that to become the man that God would have for me to be so that my children will one day speak of me as I speak of my father as being the spiritual leader in the home. God looks for men with desire to know the person of God, the plan of God, the power of God, and also the protection of God. Psalm 91, God is there to lead us through difficult times, men. Oh, yes, that's a great passage of Scripture. Go home and read it this afternoon. God is there with us. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee by the right hand of my righteousness. I will go with thee all the way, even to the end of the age. God is with us, men, to walk with us as he did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through the fire. And as he did with Daniel in the lion's den, God is there to guide us. And he even walks us from this life to the next life. Yes. Thank God for his protection. God is looking for men who desire the person of God, the plan of God, the power of God, the protection of God. But God is also looking for men with dedication, dedicated to serve God. It takes the strong man to serve God consistently throughout life. You know how many people I've seen come and go? People get in church, they're all excited about God. They're going to do the God thing. Before long, they're not touching church with a 10-foot pole. They're not touching anything in reference to God with a 10-foot pole. You know why? In all likelihood, they never were born again to start with. You know who my heroes are? Not those who can hit the three-pointers. Not the John Stocktons of this world. I'm dating myself, going back to the Michael Jordan days with Chicago Bulls. Not the John Stocktons of this world. Not those who can kick the 50-yard field goals. Not those who can throw the touchdown passes. My heroes, and I mean this with every fiber of my being, my heroes are those men who serve God consistently throughout life. God wants us to serve him. Men who are dedicated to his service. Men who are dedicated to stand for God. Anybody can quit. Anybody can go along. Anybody can go along to get along, right? But it takes courage to stand for God. We need his help, but thank God... The Bible says I can do all things through Christ. We need men who are willing to be branded, who are willing to be maligned, who are willing to be ostracized, who are willing to be shunned, who are willing to be called names. We need men who are willing to stand for God. We need men who are willing to suffer. Oh boy, we don't want any part of that, do we? No, we want the health, wealth, and the prosperity. Just serve the Lord. You'll be healthy, wealthy, and wise. I beg your pardon. God never promised you a rose garden. You've never heard me say that before, have you? Yeah. Dedicated to suffer for the Lord. I, I was talking with one of the men in our church recently, and he stated this, and I believe this fully. I believe the only thing that's going to bring revival in our nation is for the people of God to genuinely suffer. And by the way, we are on that trajectory right now. It's not that I'm wanting it, but if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. But we need men who are willing to suffer, men who are willing, once again, to be maligned. We want everyone to love us. We want everyone to accept us. 
we want people to think well of us, and, and I understand that. That's in me. That's in you as well. We want people to say nice things about us. But there's something more important than anything that I've just said, and that is obeying God. And please understand, in this culture in which we live, if you stand tall for God, everyone will not be your friend. But here's what the Bible says. They that live godly, listen, shall, not might, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. The Bible also tells us that if we suffer with him, we will one day reign with him. So the question we need to ask ourselves, men, when's the last time someone challenged you for your faith? When's the last time someone shunned you for your faith? When's the last time someone branded you? Oh, boy, that's really prevalent today, right, to brand people. And we're terrified of that. Oh, please don't brand me. Don't call me misogynistic. Don't call me xenophobic. Don't call me homophobic. Don't call me racist. Oh, please, anything. Please don't call me racist. That sends people running for the hills, right? They're terrified. Men, we need to understand that God has called us to stand for the truth. That doesn't mean that we are unnecessarily offensive. None of us should be unnecessarily offensive. We ought to speak the truth in love. But here's the deal. If we stand for what is right, if we stand on the truth of God's Word, that is diametrically opposed to the culture in which we live and the drift of the culture. But Paul said this, be strong in the Lord. Paul said, having done all, to stand. And Paul said, do not be squeezed into the mold of this world. We need men who are not controlled by the thinking of this world system, but men who are controlled by God's Word and God's Spirit. Men who are dedicated to serve God, to stand for God, to suffer. And finally, God is looking for men with determination. Going along with the last point, men who are willing to suffer for the Lord as Paul suffered. Paul said, I count not my life as my own. In one passage, Paul said, I count my life but dung that I may win Christ. If anyone knew what it was to suffer for Christ, it was the Apostle Paul. The one who in his pre-conversion life hunted down Christians and had them imprisoned and put to death. God radically transformed his life on the road to Damascus, and he went forth a changed, transformed man, never to be the same again. And he went from persecuting and hunting people down to being persecuted himself. He knew what it was to be shunned. He knew what it was to be ostracized. He knew what it was to be marginalized. He knew what it was to be branded. He knew what it was to be criticized even by the brethren, by the way. He knew what it was to be criticized. He knew what it was to be thrown into prison. And ultimately, he was willing to have his head taken off for the cause of Christ. That's the determination that we need today, men. A willingness to suffer for the Lord as Paul suffered. And finally, a willingness to allow Satan to persecute as Paul was persecuted. Paul understood satanic oppression. By the way, it's real. Satanic oppression is very real. Some have even said that that was Paul's thorn in the flesh. I don't know that I'll go that far. I tend to believe it was a physical problem. But nevertheless, regardless of whether that's true or not, whether his thorn in the flesh was satanic oppression, we do know without a shadow of a doubt that he suffered satanic oppression. But in many ways, listen to me, men, perhaps one of the most important statements I will make today, if not the most important statement. The Apostle Paul, his life was a statement. I was thinking about this as I was preparing for the message yesterday. His life was a statement. In many ways, directed towards Satan. Bring it on! Bring it! Throw what you wish at me, but I will stand for God even to my death. And here's the good news. Satan cannot bring anything our way unless God approves it. Remember Job? God said, Satan, you can afflict him, but you can't take his life. 
Anything that happens, God is allowing it in my life for a reason. In many cases, an unseen reason. But Paul stood tall for his God. Once again, arguably, the greatest New Testament Christian who ever lived, writing approximately half the New Testament. He was willing to suffer, and that's what we need. You see, God's work only goes forward as man does his work. Now, follow me. God has chosen to work through men in this world. God advances his work through men. Not primarily angels, primarily men. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying God cannot use ladies? I am not saying that. Don't be so sensitive, ladies. Please, I had a message for, on Mother's Day in reference to this. Okay, yes, I believe God can use ladies in a mighty way. But can we please just apply this today to men? This is specifically about husbands and fathers. And God works through men. Read the Old Testament. Judges, kings, prophets. Read the New Testament. Disciples, apostles, church leaders, church laymen. Oh, we desperately need godly laymen in our churches. I told one of our men this morning, should I call you old faithful or old yeller? He'd never seen the movie, so it didn't register. But you know, I should be able to look at every man in this church who attends this church and say, now that is a man who is faithful to God, who is faithful to his wife, who is faithful to his family, who is faithful to this church. I should be able to say that. God may not have called you to be a pastor, missionary, or an evangelist, but God has called all of us men, once again, to honor Him, to fellowship with Him, to glorify Him, to give others a right opinion of Him, to represent Him on this earth. We need men in our churches who say, it is my responsibility to serve God, not simply the one who brings the sermon on Sunday morning, not simply the leader of the life group, not simply the leader of the Sunday school class. It is my responsibility as a man to stand tall for God. And yes, God is looking for men of decisiveness like Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God is looking for men of desire desirous to know the person of God and deepen that relationship, desirous to know the plan of God, the power of God, the protection of God. God is looking for men today, today, June the 20th, 2021. God is looking for men today who will say, I'm going to stand for my God. I'm not going to bow the knee to Baal. I'm not going to bow to a false image. I'm going to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If I'm the only one, if I'm the only one standing, I'm still going to stand for my God. I'm going to be willing to be shunned, ostracized, maligned, called names, persecuted, whatever it may be. I'm going with God. I'm going with His Word. I'm following His Spirit. I'm not following the spirit of this culture. God of this world is Satan. I'm not following the God of this world. I'm following the spirit of God that lives within me. Men, here's the question. Are you answering the call? Because God is searching once again. Not simply for men. There's plenty of men. Dime a dozen, right? God's not simply looking for fathers, many fathers, dime a dozen. God's not simply looking for those we would say, well, that's a good father. They're a dime a dozen, although not enough of them, but a dime a dozen, if you will. There's many of them. God is looking for men who will be godly. Rick, love it back there. God wants you to be godly. Dwayne, God wants you to be godly. Kim, God wants you to be godly. Jim, God wants you to be godly. Bryce, one day you'll have a family, and God wants you to be godly. That's what we need today. God is searching. So the question is, are we answering the call? And all God's people said, Father, thank you for this time to look into your word. And we do know that you want us, first of all, to have a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. And that's the only way that we can know you. We do know that you want us to deepen our relationship with you. 
that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering. We know that you want us to tap into that power within us to be the man that you would have us to be. We know that you want us to be decisive like Joshua of old is for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We know that you want us to be willing to stand for you and you want us to be willing to suffer for you. You want us to be willing to be persecuted, even be put to death for the cause of Christ. Help us to answer that call. That's what you're looking for. May it not be said concerning this church, concerning this person, May it not be said from you, I could not find any man. I could not find any man at Bible Baptist who really wanted to honor me and glorify me and magnify me and give others a right opinion of me. May that not be said, Lord. May it be said that we at Bible Baptist are willing to answer that call and be the man that you would have for us to be. A godly man. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to have a time of invitation. If you're not certain that you have everlasting life, I encourage you as soon as the song begins to step out and just come down to the communion table and take my hand and say, Pastor, I want to know that I have everlasting life. And you can learn right here, right now, today, how you can know that you have everlasting life. Perhaps you have trusted Christ as your Savior and the message has spoken to your heart and you want to come and kneel down and, and say, Lord, help me not simply to be a father or a good father. Help me to be a godly father. Or maybe you're not a father, but you want to come and say, God, help me to be not simply a man or a good man, but a godly man. Perhaps you'd like to join our fellowship. Whatever the need might be, as this song begins in just a moment, I encourage you to step out. I surrender all. To Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily verse together and mean it. side to us yes today it's called toxic masculinity right there needs to be a tough side to us but especially in the spiritual realm just a tenaciousness like Paul Paul said 
I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Just a bulldog it, if you will, determination that we're not going to quit, that we're going to serve God, we're going to honor Him throughout our lives, whatever may come. We need that. We need that tough determination aspect, but we also need the gentleness. Men, it's okay to shed a tear every now and then. It doesn't make you less of a man. Sometimes we're afraid for people to see any tenderness. We need to have that side of us as well and develop that side, the nurturing side. So I call upon all men, whether you're married or not, to be a man of God, to have that dogged determination to serve God throughout life and have a tender heart, allowing God to speak to you and being sensitive to others, especially when you're wrong others, being sensitive to that. Well, I'm so glad you came today, and I trust you were blessed by the service. Among many things for which I am thankful, I am thankful the power did not go out. <laughs> you thought I didn't see that. I was looking. I was looking. I was looking. I was spying in, okay. So, uh, yeah, power went out a couple of times last week, but uh, praise the Lord, that didn't happen today. Wonderful service. Trust that you've been blessed and I know the Lord's been honored today in this service. So we're going to close out with a doxology. And I want to encourage all of you, treat your father very well today. Not simply today, but every day, but especially today. Let him know how much you appreciate him. Let him know how much you care for him. And just make him feel valued and wanted and respected. Respected. So important that he feel respected. Let's sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. One final thing. I recognize not everyone is married, not everyone is a father, so we do have some of these over here. My wife will be behind the table, and this is for those who are present. Please do not come and ask my wife, can I give that to my second cousin's aunt, aunt's uncle who lives out in Wyoming? Okay, no, this is for those who are present today in the room, but we do have some left, and we want you to have that because we do appreciate all men at Bible Baptist Church. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming.